good morning, everyone. I hate, I hate tamping down the chatter because this is a pretty exciting day, uh, but I thought we might want to go ahead and get started so we can actually celebrate why we're all here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll. So proud to be with all of you this morning as we talk about the workforce future, the needs in our workforce future, and how we can accomplish those things together. We're so thrilled to be in this particular setting, uh, the Dorchester Pipe Fitters Hall because we really see this as the nexus of how we build a clean energy future and do it in a way with diverse workers, good jobs, and great training programs. And that's what happens right here every day. You know, when Governor Healy and I um, took office, um, the governor was fond of saying, and she still does, I, I was just we just wrapped up a call this morning out in the parking lot, and I said, I'm heading into the pipe fitters hall. She said, ah, oh, I wish I was there. Remember, we see the climate crisis as both our greatest challenge, it really is, but also our greatest opportunity in this commonwealth. And if anybody can figure out how to advance a clean energy future in a way that's smart and technical, where more people win, I think that's right here in Massachusetts. You may have seen some of our most recent announcements the Mass Community Climate Bank. We're focused on a climate bank, the first in the country that will help us expand affordable housing, ensuring that we have both uh, healthy and high energy efficient buildings in places that frankly typically have been underserved, doing this in a way that builds equity and fairness when we think about environmental justice. Our historic offshore wind solicitation designed to ensure not only good paying jobs are created along our coastlines, but that Massachusetts is a leader in the offshore wind industry providing huge amounts of clean energy that we know we need. And today, we're so thrilled to be making another exciting announcement that will help build, not only build wealth and grow in our economy, but also advance our climate goals, a true resilient future. Uh, one of the reasons that we're doing this here in this particular space is because we know the value of having good union trained jobs as we think about building out this more resilient future. And so we're so pleased to announce that through the Mass, Ener the Mass Clean Energy Center, we're awarding $18 million to support, support over 40 organizations that will train workers across the Commonwealth in climate critical fields. You know, these grants are going to come through three programs, and some of the recipients, I can see the smiles, you're all here, right, ready to pick up your checks and get to work, and we are ready for that to happen too. Uh, we've got grants in three programs, Equity Workforce, Minority Women-Owned Business Enterprises, and Offshore Wind Works. They support training programs that will lead to well-paying jobs that are equitable and accessible to all of our residents. With a laser-focused laser view on the needs of the clean energy industry, Mass CEC's work ensures that the residents who participate in these programs can immediately get to work, earn a living, and contribute their skills. Why is that so critical? Because if we really want a true clean energy future here in Massachusetts, and we do, we will not achieve that without the workforce to build it, to maintain it, to sustain it. That's what today is all about. Grantees include unions looking to expand and diversify their ranks while providing valuable training in these new fields. Community colleges helping to retrain fossil fuel workers into clean energy. Think about that, reskilling, upskilling. We've got a whole lot of folks who are already skilled, and we just need to pivot a little bit in this particular area. We've got innovation incubators looking to cultivate a diverse new cohort of clean tech leaders and community organizations helping historically underserved workers enter this promising new field. As the mayor of a former uh, coal-fired power plant host community, and I want to recognize uh, I know Mayor Pangalo was here. It still feels weird saying Mayor Pangalo in Salem. Um, we know what it means to be able to host a fossil fuel plant. We know what those opportunities were in terms of jobs and tax revenues. When that power plant came to Salem in 1950, I'm pretty sure we welcomed it. Um, we needed jobs. We needed tax revenues. It was thought about as something that would be beneficial to our community. Now we know better. That same place, once dubbed one of the filthy five, is now home to one of the one of the cleanest, most efficient natural gas plants in the country that has a hard stop at 2050 to bring a, bring a bridge forward to newer and cleaner, more renewable energy. And that same location will be home to an offshore wind marshalling and construction yard. Think about that. In one lifetime, 1950, a coal-fired power plant, 
to today, 20, uh, 2023, home and a port for offshore wind. It can happen. We need it to happen faster, and we need to make sure that we've got people trained and ready and accessible to do that. And the last piece of that story that I think is really critical and why I'm so proud to be part of an administration that is intentionally ne leaning in to making sure as we think about growth and the economy and building a clean energy future, we're going to do it in a more inclusive way. That power plant was in Salem, Massachusetts, a gateway city. It wasn't in Marblehead Neck or Manchester by the Sea or the Gold Coast of Beverly, all in the North Shore. That power plant serves all of those places, but it was in Salem, a place that welcomed it because, frankly, we needed the jobs and the tax revenues. Those are the communities we also want to make sure are benefiting, the ones who have certainly paid the price, taken on, taken on the tax, taxing of the environment, um, making sure as we move forward we want a clean future, but we want one that's more equitable. Um, these programs, these opportunities are the ones that we see as true win-win-wins for workers, for employers, and for our state's clean energy future. Not only do these grants support our local economy by strengthening our workforce, but they also encourage other employers to view Massachusetts as a state where they want to work in. This drives our competitive advantages and positions our state to be a leader when it comes to workforce development. Employers tell us every day they're going to go where talent is. We need to drive talent to make sure we're not only achieving that future we have with respect to clean energy, but we have the employer base here ready to achieve it. We think we have an exciting future ahead of us. This clean in energy industry is growing, and we want it to grow inclusively with the help of neighbors across Massachusetts. Through programs just like this, we're going to do it. I want to congratulate all of today's awardees, and I'm so fortunate. I should recognize everyone who's here. Um, we have, from our team in particular, I want to recognize Secretary Tepper, who's going to be speaking next. She's heading up Energy Environmental Affairs. She's doing an amazing job. Governor and I are so pre pleased with the team that we've been building um, on our cabinet, focused on intentionally looking at an agenda that's going to lead Massachusetts forward that we can meet this moment. We've got Secretary Lauren Jones, who's heading up uh, our work on labor and workforce, and we have Jen DeLuisi from the Clean Energy Center, who is responsible for getting these dollars out the door and supporting your efforts to make sure we have a strong clean energy future. And with that, I'm going to introduce Secretary Tepper to say a few words. I know we've got other speakers who so will be introducing everyone here. So thank you, Secretary Tepper. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. We're so lucky in this state to have such strong leadership right from the top um, on clean energy and climate, and the Lieutenant Governor has been an avid champion of clean energy since she started in Salem and here now um, for, the, for the rest of the government. And, you know, I was looking as I was talking to people as I was coming in, I think it's worth pausing for a moment and thinking about how lucky we are to be living in Massachusetts. Every person here, our legislature, our unions, our government, our local government, our businesses, we are all on board with a clean energy transition. You can't say that about every place, but all, all of you come from different places and all of us are working on the same goal. It is a unique opportunity. It is a life, a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to change our economy, create jobs, and do it together. So um, I thank you so much for, for having us here today, and we're really excited. You know, I think I have said this before for people who have already heard this, I apologize, but the heroes of our climate, our climate future, are going to be the workers. It's going to be the electricians, the plumbers, the builders, the innovators. That's who's going to make sure that we get to where we need to get to in 2050, which, as you know, in Massachusetts is net zero emissions by, by 2050. Um, so I think uh, one of the things that we have done recently is um, a report on thinking about how many clean energy jobs um, Mass CC did an excellent report on thinking about how many clean energy jobs we actually are going to need. Um, and we estimate that, that 38,000 clean energy workers are going to be needed by the end of the decade. So that's, that's a lot of workers. But it's, a ton, again, a ton of opportunity. Um, you know, that's a 37% increase from where we are today. A big task. Um, but that's why we are so grateful that the governor and lieutenant governor have prioritized investment in workforce development and that we have Secretary Jones carrying it all out. 
um, as you all know, Secretary Jones is not just a leader um, in uh, workforce development, but she's a leader in helping us get to the climate uh, goals that we need to get to. So I'm really happy that we have this cross-secretariat um, cooperation, a whole team Massachusetts um, uh, working hard on, on the clean energy transition. And as the Lieutenant Governor said, one of the things that is the most important to us is that equity be at the heart of every initiative that we're doing. And the climate crisis presents us with an opportunity to right past wrongs and build healthier, thriving communities. These industries are rapidly growing to meet this moment and are paying good paying, family sustaining jobs, jobs with strong wages and fulfilling work. That's why these programs are structured specifically to attract women and people of color to these fields. Because the people who have been most deeply impacted by the climate change should be the ones who benefit the most from our clean energy transition. So thank you all for joining us. We're very excited to talk about these grants today. Um, one of the best parts of my job is doing events like this and giving out money um, <laughs> to deserving uh, parties and uh, talking about all the great work that you're doing um, and how you're using the money. So thank you. And I'm going to turn it over to Secretary Jones. Before, um, before we bring Secretary Jones up, I just want to acknowledge how grateful um, both the governor and I feel to be able to work with Secretary Jones. She has a background in running apprenticeship programs, a backforce in local workforce development, a background in local workforce development, and is really helping us lead. The number one thing we hear about often is housing and not having enough housing, not having enough affordable housing. Yeah, we can clap for that. We are not... <laughs> We're not going to admire that problem anymore. We're going to really work on it. Um, but the second issue is talent in workforce development and not having enough people to fill jobs or having the right skills that folks have, um, that, that, that employers have needs for. And the background that Lauren brings to this work is so critical, having both private sector experience, apprentice training experience, and the ability to bring all that to bear in our labor and workforce strategies. The second person who I didn't recognize right on the floor the first time is Shamia Turner, who is one of our recipients today, like all of you. You, running a building pathways program and we are so as the as the spouse of a union bricklayer like so excited about building pathways programs in this particular area are tied to, to clean energy recognizing that we want to invest in programs that are providing uh, pathways for young adults and others who want to be upskilled or reskilled or see this as a profession so thank you for joining us and lastly none of these programs are possible without support from the legislature we are so fortunate that as secretary tepper mentioned we have a lot of alignment we're not uh, a, a commonwealth that doesn't believe in climate change and making the sorts of investments, whether it's in workforce or in the initiatives un underway to create the environment for an offshore wind to happen here. And Representative Moran is here, and I just wanted to recognize you and thank you for being here and the support we receive from the legislature. It's critical to programs like this and funding like these and the policies we need to make Massachusetts successful in that endeavor. And with that, I'm so pleased to offer up <laughs> Secretary Lauren Jones to offer a few remarks on, on this terrific program that we have uh, coming together. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and um, thank you to the pipe fitters for hosting today. Just looking around the room and seeing the kind of convening that we have, um, people that are working collaboratively to lead on opportunities to support our workers um, and our future talent is really incredible. So thank you to the pipe fitters for hosting this celebration. Um, I think the Lieutenant Governor spoke to this, but I, I think since day one, um, the Governor, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll have been very passionate about their commitment to investing in Massachusetts today and thinking about our stronger future. In order to do that, it's the people that are going to help to drive this work. And I think that's what we're also celebrating with the $18 million plus dollars in investments that we are doing to support our clean future, but the people that are going to help drive that and to do so in partnership with so many of the organizations that we're celebrating today. Um, when I think about the workforce grants that we are celebrating, a few things come to mind, things that resonate um, that I feel like are true to all of the grantees and the mission of the work that we are, are here to, to celebrate. Um, first, as an administration, we're focused on trying to close the workforce skills gap. We really want to make sure that residents can meet 
their potential, but also the potential needs of our employers, the needs that employers and the business community and the trades are experiencing today and also for the future. We want to make sure that everyone has a shot in being part of that workforce. And so we want to make sure through training programs that we're celebrating today that we'll continue to push for, we're bridging that gap, creating more pathways to help close that skills gap. But we also know that we have an immense opportunity to support the high growth industries, the opportunities that we see in industries like clean energy. And we need to make sure that as we do, we make sure that everyone is part of that journey and, they be not, and individuals will not be left behind. And so again, the investments we celebrate ensure um, opportunities to upskill, reskill, to pivot, and to all uh, be able to participate in our future as we invest more in the clean energy sector. We also realize that, unfortunately, there's far too many people that are left on the sidelines, um, people that have been discouraged looking for work, um, whether it's because of the pandemic or their, their communities are traditionally underrepresented, maybe even more underrepresented in clean energy. And we want to make sure that through the intentionality that I think is represented with each of the grants that we celebrate today, there's an opportunity to bring those discouraged workers, those unemployed, underemployed, and provide pathways through an equitable lens so that our future, our clean future, is represented um, across Massachusetts by the diverse talents that we have today and that we will continue to have in the future. We also know that in order to um, have a competitive future, we do need to make these kinds of investments because we know that the Commonwealth is a place that welcomes all talent and we want to continue to be a place that attracts that talent, retains that talent, and develops that talent and doing it in a way that celebrates diversity of talent because at the end of the day we want to make sure that all can participate in the opportunities that we're focused on and I think the investments from building pathways, action for equity, be fit, the friends in the North Shore and so many grantees that we're celebrating today are helping to provide that exact means. Um, I think we're also celebrating, I've heard it now mentioned by both Lieutenant Governor Driscoll and Secretary Tepper, the collaboration. Um, we cannot do this alone. I mean, for me to try to solve all workforce development in my office is not going to be the solution. It is the partnership that's represented in this room. It's represented across the Commonwealth, but certainly underscored with the grants we celebrate today. Um, I think it also is represented by the team that the Governor and Lieutenant Governor have put together. And I've had the privilege of working alongside Secretary Tepper and with the Mass Clean Energy Center to really focus on workforce development and whenever we have conversations as we think about how to fill the projected demands that we see, how do we create more opportunities, we know that it takes a partnership and it's represented by labor, by employers, academia, nonprofits, and so many who are coming here today and are at the you know, forefront in trying to think differently in expanding pathways and creating more opportunities for everyone to participate. So I appreciate that partnership to make all of this happen. Um, and with that, I'd love to introduce Jen Delosio to help speak to the important work that the Mass Clean Energy Center is doing. Um, you've been a great partner to me as Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development and I think to the administration as we focus on advancing our workforce for clean energy. So, Jen. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Secretaries Tepper and, and Jones and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. And thank you to the Pipefitters for hosting us here today in this incredibly beautiful facility. Simply put, everyone has talked about it today, but we will need you and your colleagues in skilled labor to help make this energy transition possible. Reaching net zero by 2050 is going to be a monumental achievement. But we are not going to get there without highly trained and highly talented people. We have to expand our workforce and ensure that it's capable of building, operating, and maintaining these clean energy solutions. Last month at the Mass CEC, we uh, published our Comprehensive Workforce Needs Assessment Report. That report really tells the story of where we need to be in 2030, which 
unfortunately, is just seven short years away. But we know that we're going to need to add more than 38,000 workers uh, working in clean energy. And we have about 104,000 today. So as Secretary Tupper said, that's a 37% increase for all of you math uh, people in the room. And that's really important for us to meet even our 2030 climate goals. We're going to need that much scale. So you can see the full details of, the, of that report on our website. But really what this story tells us is an, a unique opportunity to create a workforce that's equitable, that reflects our communities, and that breaks down the barriers to access that have been experienced by so many. This is, of course, not going to be easy, and it's going to take intentional focus, intentional collaboration, which we have already great collaboration with so many of our partners in the room here with across the, the state government um, and with the legislature, who has, uh, over the last couple of years, provided MassEC significant funding to be doing this workforce development work. Um, but this will help us make sure that the, those most impacted by climate change can be at the forefront of our efforts to mitigate climate change. Today, we're so proud to be here to announce over $18 million in workforce funding for 44 different awardees through three of our workforce development programs that we have at MassEC, many of who uh, are, the awardees are here with us today, and we're so grateful for your partnership and for the work that you all do. And I want to also thank our workforce development team who works tirelessly every day to make sure that we do this with intention and with thought and care. Um, our first group of awards is from our Minority and Women-Owned Business Enterprise Support Grants. These grants will enable new organizations to flourish and help existing organizations grow their programming and reach within climate-critical areas. Prosperous Minority and Women Business Enterprises are valuable community-responsive organizations whose work will tackle climate-critical issues and will employ and train community members in this growing field of clean energy. Our second set of grants is our equity workforce training grants. These grants stimulate the creation of career training pipelines and pathways that prepare individuals from underserved communities and fossil fuel occupations to fill positions to become the highly trained workers of tomorrow and to meet the needs of our clean energy employers. And last but not least, we're announcing our next round of Offshore Wind Works grants. With Massachusetts being a leader in offshore wind, there's a huge need and potential for careers in this specialized field. These awards provide the upskilling, retraining, and additional support and investment necessary for Massachusetts workers to take advantage of this new and growing industry. And I'd also like to thank Vineyard Wind and South Coast Wind for their financial support for these, uh, this grant program. And in total, we have 44 organizations being awarded grants today whose programming will reach and benefit residents across the Commonwealth. Many of you are here with us today, and we would just want to congratulate you and thank you for your, your partnership. Our awardees offer a broad range of services to individuals and businesses. These organizations will help participants overcome historical systemic barriers, such as lack of access to capital faced by no minority and women-owned business enterprises, and obstacles to job placement faced by returning citizens, disconnected youth, and non-native English speakers. I want to thank the Healy Driscoll administration for their early and robust support for the clean energy industry and for workforce development specifically. You recognize the immense importance of a well-trained and diverse workforce that can deliver the benefits of clean energy and provide valuable family-sustaining jobs. The historic budget support for MassCEC means that we can move rapidly forward to ensure that we can not only meet our goals, but also bring transformational change in our communities. Next, I'd like to introduce Shamia Turner, who has been a trainee of one of our grantees today, Building Pathways. She's designed and facilitated workshops centered around workers' rights and diversity and is an ardent advocate for women in the trades, now serving in a leadership role at the Sheet, workers, Sheet Metal Workers Union. So please welcome Shamia. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for being here today, and a special thank you to the Mass Clean Energy Center, Secretary Jones, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, and Secretary Tepper. Um, and I also really want to highlight Mary Vogel, who's the Executive Director of Building Pathways. Um, 
she tasked me with representing Building Pathways. I was privileged to be part of their cycle two 12 years ago, and I am a testament to what, what this kind of investment can do. Um, so I didn't hear about, I wanted to be in the construction industry. I want to work with my hands. Um, I was told to go to college. That wasn't the path for me. And I found myself working in the service industry. I was a bartender, I was a server. Um, I was not making enough money. <laughs> I was not making enough money to make ends meet. And it's really hard to think about other things, especially the climate crisis, when you're really just trying to survive. So all those years ago, I, I, I cared about the environment, but I cared about where my next meal was coming from more. And building pathways helped me to find a way to that. I never in my wildest dreams imagined that I could have a fulfilling career. Um, that I could get excellent training, that I could have great benefits, and then I could also make a difference in the future. Um, and that's what this career has afforded me. So I've, I um, joined the Sheet Metal Workers in 2012. I went through their five-year apprenticeship program. And now I stand before you as a business development representative for that union. Thank you. And so, I, I enjoy telling this story because this is something that's accessible for anyone. I'm, I grew up in Dorchester. I didn't grow up that far away from here. I went to the public schools here. Um, and there are other people in this room who have a similar story to this who didn't realize how they could um, provide for their families and then reach back into their communities and pull them up. And the unions are the fastest way to do that. Um, and so I'm privileged here to represent labor. I'm privileged here to represent the building trades and the power um, of, of that movement. And <laughs> thank you. And what I would want to leave with any young person, the people who are going to be benefiting from the, uh, from the grants from the, the Mass Clean Energy Center, is that you have agency in your future. You have the power to not only get your hands dirty and build it, but you also have a voice. And this, all of you in this room are helping to make sure that we have a stable platform to have good union, sustainable careers that are equitable for the future. So thank you so much um, <laughs> for the investment. It's my absolute pleasure to get up here and um, to shout it from the rooftops that we are grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shamia, for telling us your story and giving us really the perspective of someone building this clean energy industry. Thank you to all your colleagues in the trades for recognizing the urgency of climate action and helping us to deliver clean energy to Massachusetts. Thank you again to Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Tepper, and Secretary Jones, and our elected leaders here with us today. And importantly, for all of you grantees joining us today, you have exciting work ahead of you, and we're really looking forward to the partnership and future success. Thank you all for being here.